so this is my sketch that I have when I'm meeting with my clients. When I sit down, I ask them, so just tell me a little bit about your, your um, wedding. What kind of colors do you have? What kind of flowers are you incorporating in your, in your design? Sometimes they have answers, sometimes they don't. <laughs> sometimes they have pictures of other cakes that they like and they will show those to me and that's always helpful. I mean, I tell people that I never copy cakes but it's always helpful to see what they think that they like, you know. Um, so you can see this is a mess. And this is, I don't even, I don't even know if I really show them this. This is just more of like my personal notes so that when I go to sketch something later, I know that I have a three-tier cake. I know what the measurements are, the 10, 8, 6. I know, it's like writing notes to yourself later. So I have to make sure that I remind myself, what do these squiggly marks mean? <laughs> like, what are these? So these are supposed to be leaves here, and then there's succulents here. That's what that scribble is. <laughs> and <laughs> this scribble means more succulents and white flowers. And um, so you can see that uh, this isn't really, like, this isn't going to make the client say, wow, you really have captured my idea. Uh -huh. And... Um, uh, but this still even takes time. It takes me about an hour to gather this information and sketch it all out mm -hmm. and make notes and stuff. So um, it, I would say probably I spend two hours, you know, just sketching up things for the client, and which seems like a lot. But after I go through this process and then the secondary process of uh, sketching it up really nice, they usually ha never have changes. They get super excited. They suddenly look at me as an amazing professional who's going to just blow them away with the cake because the sketch is so above and beyond what they've seen. And sometimes it is the difference between them choosing me and another decorator. We might have had equally tasty cakes, equally, you know, good prices, but because they like my sketch so much, they might choose me over another decorator. So it's just mm -hmm. another tool in my box to put me ahead of other people in my area. I agree. Well, and okay, so you look at this sketch right here, this little scribbling that you have, mm -hmm. and a lot of cake decorators will will use this as, you know, this this type of thing as their sketch. Right. And, you know, a lot of uh, clients are not artists. They right. don't see your vision. They yeah. don't they don't get it, you know? And so they're looking at this thinking are they really going to make the cake the way I want it? Yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> and so if you can have a better picture for them, something that they can really see and grasp and say, oh, my cake's going to look like this, yes. they're going to be so much more excited about it and, yes. and so much more comfortable about it. Right. Because otherwise they're just going to be like, well, maybe we shouldn't do that because, you know, on the, on the sketch it's, it didn't look as good as I hoped. Yeah. And honestly, and so, what they usually think is, I'm paying $700 for that. <laughs> that, is <laughs> yeah. serious, that is seriously what they think. They just think that it's <laughs> not worth the money. So when your sketch is like really impressive looking, they can suddenly see, yes, this is what I'm spending my money on, and I... I'm, I'm okay with it, you know, because they can really, like you said, they don't have to visualize anything. They can really see exactly what they're going to be getting. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, so the next thing, uh, I have this actually printed out like right in front of me, so I will actually keep this to the side of me while I'm working um, so that I don't get off track. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is open up your Photoshop template, which uh, you know what a Photoshop template is, is by um, the three letters at the end of the file, which is PSD. And I don't know what that stands for, but I know that it represents a Photoshop mm -hmm. template. Now, yours is going to have a, a white background. I made mine black. You, I can turn that off and on, just so that's a little bit easier for you guys to see what I am um, what I am doing here. Make sure you guys can see that. Is that centered in there? Okay, can you see it? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so um, you should it, be able to if you screen if you hit the screen share, you should be able to select the window that is just that. Okay, let me without do, all let that me extra that. stuff. Let me do that really quick so, so that it'll make it bigger for people to see. The desktop. Is that right? Yep. Perfect. Okay, cool. There. That'll be less confusing for people. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. All right. So um, when you first open your uh, template, the way that you do that is you go to File, Open, and then you navigate to your folder that has your Photoshop templates, and I labeled them for Photoshop. 
so it's not too confusing, hopefully. Okay, and so really fast, these are the templates that that you have to, you know, that we're selling today. Yes. And can you choose, I, I, does it come in just this, or does it... I choose different sizes and things like that. There or? are different sizes. Mm. So for the Photoshop one, it comes in round and square, and they both have four tiers on it. And the way that you change up the tiers, like for instance, the cake that I'm making today is only three tiers. So um, each one of these tiers is on its own layer, which can be confusing if you don't understand um, you know, Photoshop. But basically, Photoshop is all composed of, of invisible mm. layers. So you have the background, which is your base layer, and then you might draw on top of that, which is another layer, and then you might add more detail on top of that, which is another layer, so that you can go back and edit the different layers that you're working on. So for instance, this is the background. I can turn that off and on. The further down the layer is, the further back it is. So everything on top is the thing that's closest to what you're working on, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. and then everything else is in the middle working backwards. So if you're trying to edit a certain layer, and you're drawing on it or you're trying to erase it and it's not working, you probably are just on the wrong layer. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that was a big thing for me. That was once I figured out the layer thing. Yes. Photoshop got so much easier. <laughs> yes. It's confusing so to think of things in multiple layers because you're only used to working in one layer, which is paper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um so it, once we understand that these are on layers, I can turn off the one that I don't want to use. So I don't want the very bottom tier. And um, the way Photoshop works is whatever you click on, it will go to that layer. So you can see as I'm clicking on these different ones, it's moving in the layer palette and um, automatically selecting which one I am on. If it's not doing that for you, there's a little button in this upper left-hand corner that says Auto Select. Make sure that is clicked mm -hmm. so that you tell Photoshop that whenever you click on something, you want it to automatically select that. Um, some people prefer to select the layer manually. manually. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. That's very unintuitive. So I'm going to um, just move this tier down to where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. When you're moving things around, if you hold down the shift button while you're moving it, <laughs> you got to click on it first, then hold shift. It will make sure it stays in a straight line. Oh, if you know. let go of the shift button, you can move it all around, which may or may not be a good mm -hmm. thing. And if you made a mistake, you press Command Z and it undoes the last thing that you just did. There's also a history palette right here so that if mm -hmm. I did two or three things, like did this and then I did this, mm -hmm. if I press undo, it only undoes the last thing that I did. You can go back and undo multiple steps in this history palette right here. So I'm going to come back to where I am here. I, uh, um, I also want these to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to press Command. I have all three of these. <laughs> I'm trying to explain everything I do. I just do it really automatically. <laughs> someone, someone just asked, um, can this be rewatched afterwards? Um, because this is this is a ton of information for people. Yeah, I know, I know. So yes, you can actually. We will have this up on YouTube instantly, and it'll actually be on this page that you guys are watching right after the training is over. So you can. So you guys can watch this. <laughs> Over and over and over and over again, yeah. and which is a good thing because yeah, you should do that because yes. it will help a ton. <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to explain all the steps so that when you rewatch this, I explain what I did. <laughs> so exactly, thank you for doing that. <laughs> yes. So what I've done now is I want to make the, this cake a little bit bigger since I deleted the bottom layer. It's kind of small on my page here. So I'm going to mm -hmm. select the three layers that, that I want to be working on, and I'm going to hold shift down, click the top layer, the middle layer, and the bottom layer. So those are all three selected right now. I'm going to press command mm -hmm. T, and that it tells the, um, my computer that I want to scale this somehow. If I pulled the side here, it would scale it out sideways. If I pulled the top, it would scale it out up and down, but it would distort it. So I'm going to go at mm -hmm. the corner and hold shift down to constrain just like we did before and make it just nice and big so that I have a nice uh, nice big cake to, to be working on right now. And then I'm going to click just the layer that I want to start working on, which by the way, this button right here is to make a new layer. So these are my three layers that have cakes on it and I don't necessarily want to draw on those just in case I mess up. 
So I'm going to create a new layer, which you can delete a layer here. Yes, I want to delete you. Um, and then to create a new layer, you press this button right next to it. And that, uh, so I'm going to draw on top of that so that if I uh, take my thing here and I, oops, that's the wrong button. If I, uh, sorry, okay. So if I draw right here and I drew right on top of my layers, that would be there. I can't erase that. I can't do anything about that because I drew directly on top of my cake. But when you draw on a separate layer, you can just take this, delete it, and it's gone. And you still have your, your pretty layers there. Sometimes you will accidentally draw on your layer and you will curse your computer. <laughs> <laughs> but dang it, why did I do that? <laughs> well, I do that? Now I can't move it. I can't. Yes. And you'll go to erase it and it'll be stuck there. But I mean, that just happens. And you, there's ways of getting around it and just drawing over things and making it work. But thankfully, this is a sketch. So we don't have to worry too much about something like that. Because mm -hmm. um, if it's a little sketchy, I mean, that just adds to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is add uh, some texture to this bottom tier right here. Uh, according to my sketch, they want the bottom layer to look like it has leaves. So um, this whole cake is basically going to be like a white cake with some green succulents. So that's pretty simple to, to sketch color-wise. But how do you show that something is white but... I mean, you can't just draw white on white because then it won't look, I mean, you won't be able to see anything. Mm -hmm. So to show that something is white, I, I oh, shoot, I've got to say what I'm doing. This is the colors right down here. The one in front is the foreground color. The one in back is the background color. Um, what you, the only thing you really need to pay attention to right now is the foreground color. I'm going to double click on that, and that brings up a color palette. And you can, most people have had experience choosing colors like, in any program that you've used if you've ever painted before. But I'm going to um, choose kind of a grayish, like a light, a light grayish color. Um, and go ahead and click that. This button right here, this paintbrush, is my uh, brush tool, and that's what I use to draw. I have uh, your brush presets up here tells your computer what kind of brush you want to be using. Is it a big, big soft brush? Is it a hard brush? Is it a, a pixelated brush for making texture and stuff? There's all these different types of things. Mm -hmm. I recommend everybody uses a hard round brush that is about eight, eight pixels, you know, large. Uh, you can make that larger or smaller with this little slider right here. But six or eight is about where you want to be. I have a special preset that I made, um, which is a pen, it, it makes it more like a pencil texture, but it's very similar to the hard brush. 